Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hand Built Pottery. My name is Kimberly Wright. It is January 29th. We're going to go ahead and get started today with our, sorry, it's January 28th, January, January 28th, 2021. We're going to get started with our lesson for today. Uh, I think I'm a little bit ahead of myself. All right. So if you want to get some materials to work with today, we will be working with clay. And you only need a small amount, so um, just go ahead and grab your materials if you like. I'm going to just go ahead and get started with the conversation of what this class is all about today. So, this month, uh, usually we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, which is already passed on January 15th, and we commemorate the holiday on January the 18th. So, I hope you all had a day on and not a day off doing something to... Uh, celebrate or commemorate uh, Dr. King's ideals or something that he would have deemed great for the community or even for your own individual selves or family and friends. It's one thing you can do. So let me minimize this a little bit. So if you want to grab clay, you can do that. Today I will be making a pin or a brooch that you can wear. You can possibly make this piece out of several things, earrings, you can make an amulet or a charm. You can make um, pieces that will apply to another art piece. So I would like to say today, sorry, the correction for the date, January 28th, 2021. Today is National Daisy Day. Also, it's National uh, uh, It's another day. Sorry, give me a second. Kazoo Day. National Kazoo Day. You know the little horn that we play, the kazoo. And um, Let's start. Just because daisies are a common flower doesn't mean they aren't a special one. Daisies are native to Northern Europe, but can be found in North America, Australia, Africa, South America, and even Iceland and Greenland. The word daisy comes from the Old English language, days I, because its petals blossom at dawn and they shut at dusk. What is considered a nuisance member of the weed family can also be used to supplement gardens and yards. Celebrate the tenaciously beautiful daisy every year on January 28th. 20, January 28th, 2200 BC, before the first daisies, ancient Egyptians grew daisies in their temple gardens and used them for herbal and medicinal purposes. In 1792, daisies got classified. The botanist Paul Dietrich uh, Jacek records daisies as part of the composite family. March 12, 1912, a historic daisy, Juliet Gordon Lowe, AKA Daisy, holds the first Girl Scouts of America meeting in Georgia with 18 girls participating. And in 1964, President Lyndon Johnson capitalizes on daisies. This iconic ad that helps Johnson clinch the election begins with a three-year-old girl picking daisies in an open field and ends with a nuclear explosion. So those were just a few facts on the timeline. 
a few activities that you may uh, perform or do for National Daisy Day is to dye your daisies. Although daisies have white petals and a yellow center, using water and color dye, you can easily turn a bunch of daisies into a colorful bouquet. I know y'all see those bouquets in the florist or the store that you wonder how they get them such vibrant colors. So that's what they use, water and color dye. Make a daisy crown. A great prop for a photo shoot, video shoot, or outfit. A daisy crown is also easy to make. You can tie together the stems into a circle to fit above your head or glue the flower heads to a thin piece of twine. Also pick a daisy. Venture out into nature at a local park and find some daisies to bring home. Liven up your living room with a fresh vase full of sunshine. And last but not least, why we love National Daisy Day. Daisies are the prettiest weed of the bunch. Daisies grow naturally in the wild, and as part of the weed family, they can be considered to be a nuisance. But because they are a perennial flower and don't need much attention, they make a great addition to flower pots or gardens. Daisies by any other names smell as sweet. In its home country of England, the daisy is also called a bruise wort. As an old time holistic remedy, the daisy's crushed leaves were used to soothe bruises and blemish skin. They're pretty and useful. All right, daisies symbolize youth and innocence. Daisies are a symbol of youth and innocence and are associated with children. So I hope you learned a lot about the daisy and I hope you are going to uh, participate with creating this daisy pin or brooch. And I'm going to get started with that right now. Okay, so first of all, I need my apron. If you all have any questions right now about or suggestions or any, just want to say anything about the daisy, daisy commentary, please feel free. Can we drop out something this week? No, so we will probably more than likely have a schedule, not this week coming, but the following week. Okay. So how many people out there need to drop something off? Raise your hand. Anybody need to drop something off? Okay, that's good enough. I just wanted to make sure it was like at least more than one or two people. So, and how many people, I know a lot of people need to pick some stuff up because um, we had, I have a lot of things for people to pick up. How you doing, Miss Gwendolyn? Everybody. Good, thank you. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you, same to you. Happy New Year. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and quickly make this piece. All you need a small piece of clay. Good to we can't see your workstation. We only see the top half of you. I'm coming, I'm coming. Thank you, love. Building lately, roll the other side, 
add some moisture to that side. I want to get my clay thin enough to, to uh, mimic uh, actual petals. I don't want to go so thin as the petals are going to be breaking, but where they will be manageable for myself. So you have to ask yourself if it's manageable for you. Usually when the clay starts to roll around the rolling pin, that means it's getting thin. See that? All right. So as that you means it's what, Kim? You said when it, it rolls, it, it's what? I said usually when you roll the clay and the clay adheres or rolls around the rolling pin like it just did, that means, yeah. that means it's thin. It's getting thin. Oh, it means it's thinning, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have my piece of clay there. I'm going to build on top of this band here in newspaper. I'm going to grab just a little small ball of clay. Really small. And now I'm going to just kind of clean my hand a little bit. And I am going to take a little piece of paper and an ink pen and draw a petal. This is like the simplest way you can do it if you don't have a some type of cutter or something that looks like this. All right, so I drew I drew a petal. You can see the size of it compared to my pinky. That's my pinky finger, my small finger, so it's really small. It looks large, but it's not. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. How many of those you need? About six, seven? Um, I think I need about maybe 12 or 13. Oh, okay. When you look at a petal, uh, sorry, when you look at a daisy, you will see that it has uh, different levels of, of uh, layers of uh, flowers, uh, petals, sorry. All right, so one second. Uh, you. you did some, okay. You showed us daisies. Okay. See how mm -hmm. those are mm -hmm. like Y'all see how those pets yeah. are here? So you need more than six. All right. So moving right along, I have my petal. I'm going to go ahead and use my needle tool, my pro tools, and just um, trace out some petals. If you work in, if you're not, feel free. Usually I just kind of draw the uh, draw around the piece just and cut it later, but since this is so small, I'm going to cut them out right as I go because that will be a lot of work to go back twice after just the drawing. So I'm going straight through and cutting the petals. Just keep them close so that you can use the bit of clay that you have making sure to use the full amount of the clay and um, using as much of the surface of the clay that you can. 
Kim, where, where is a good place to buy the, um, the clay paint? Clay paint. What's clay paint? Sorry, uh, <laughs> the, um, I'm the glazers. Glazers. <laughs> I'm sorry. My mind was blank. The best place, in my opinion, is to buy glazes from any art supply uh, store that uh, caters to play, like, uh, I would say, Hobby, not Hobby Lobby, I was going to say Blick. Blick caters to uh, play, play artists or that particular supply, but generally I would go to a play uh, provider like Davin, because that's where you're going to get your best deal. What's that word? Davin, D-A-V-E-N, apostrophe S. I'm typing it in the chat. Are they open? Gavin's. Yes, they are open. Pottery and ceramic supply. Uh, Kim, due to the pandemic, now they are open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. What time, yeah, Gloria? What time? what time, Gloria? Um, it, it's the regular hours, whatever they are, like uh, nine, nine to five, or something okay. like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So far, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After I do three more, I'm going to go ahead and construct it. And I'm, I'm spacing out, show you how I uh, trace the petals so that I can show you my spacing as far as my clay because I need a couple of more pieces to make the backing since it's going to be a brooch or a pin. Since you, we are celebrating daisies, you can do anything with the daisy that you like. All right, this is how the clay looks so far. And if I were to use a pen back about this size, here's another one with the part that sticks already on here. I'm just going to stick this on the piece and draw a circle around it. That um, Davin's on Peachtree Road, Kim? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I found it online. All right, so this is my circle. You can see the pen fits inside of there. All right, That's, you don't need that much surface area. I'm just going to neaten up my circle a bit and cut it out. Here's the circle. All right, when I lift this up, I should just be able to pull the petals out. Like so. Did anybody know today was National Daisy Day? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> anybody like Daisy? Yes. Who you I like know, I always like Daisy. Who said that? Who said that? Miss Etheria. Oh, Miss Etheria. I, I couldn't hear you, Miss Etheria. Okay. <laughs> you know how you always be saying you can't hear me? All right. So I feel good today. I can hear better. Oh, no problem. Uh, so, okay. raising this camera a little bit. Uh, all right so even though i have all my petals i just want to gently it's not like i'm pressing them out a little bit i guess i'm pressing on but believe it or not it's really neatening up the edges when i just sort of press them down with my finger a bit okay. and you're more than welcome to look online <laughs> once again go back to look at a daisy to see uh, certain details. I'm going back to that little ball that we started with. 
rolling the ball in between the palms of my hands. Here it is here. It's such a large ball, even though it looks really small. It's not large. I'm saying it's large as it pertains to the proportion I want it for my flower that I'm going to cut it in half. I'm cutting that in half. And so now I have one side that's flat and the upper side that's round. I didn't need all that clay to be sitting up too high. I'm just going to sort of hit the back of that on the board so that I can flatten it and just kind of shape it down a little. All right, I'm putting that excess clay over there. And I'm going to take that circle that I had, add some moisture, spray one time. And then I'm going to get a tool that has an edge or a tip in it, so to speak. But I don't want it to be as pointy as the Pro Tool. So what I'm going to do with that, I'll show you, is draw or carve or emboss two lines on each petal looking like that. Now for that, that would be on the front? Yes, on the front. Because once again, I'm making a brooch or a pin and you're not going to be able to see the back of the petal. So the design that I'm creating, yes, goes on the top side, the front side. This is actually designed. Two, I'm making two stripes or two lines. Sort of look like an eye or a mouth. But we can make it in the design we want to on the on the cover. If you're making a daisy, then you would make the designs that's on a daisy. That's why I said right now for the class. Uh, anyway, hold on one second. You remember the daisy? Don't you see these two lines right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're making a daisy, so that's why I'm making the lines, because you might not remember just from looking at that daisy that quick, but I know the design that a daisy has. Sometimes when you concentrate or focus on certain things or study certain things over time, it just becomes second nature that you know. So pretty much that's the line that is on the daisy. Gotcha. All right, no problem. And so also, if you can see my cursor, on the actual uh, button or the center of the daisy, you see a pattern. Even though you see like little circles of balls, if you watch my uh, if you watch my cursor from the center, you have these spiraling going all the way out, and it looks like a psychedelic type of design going all the way around mm -hmm. the actual foot. So we're gonna create that as well. All right. So back to this, we have our circle or disc, which will be the base for the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a feather texture brush or fan tool. Add a little bit more moisture. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply right at the tip one of these petals. And then I'm going to go directly opposite, diagonally over to the other side and just gently smooth that down. As I am scratching with the texture, the fan brush to uh, blend the clay in with the disc, I then go back quickly and smooth it with my finger as I go on, so I don't have to do that later. So I'm on the fourth petal, diagonally, directly and right across. I'm going upward, 
diagonally smoothing that in across that petal so that my proportion and measurement will be straight. Smoothing that out, keeping it on going. Across from there. Did I miss it or did you use in the slip? Actually, since I just sprayed that little water, it. all of that just made slip. Okay. Like you don't even need that much. So right now I have this looking like this, and you can see there's a space between each one. What I'm going to continue to do is uh, put petals in between those pieces, but continue to layer up until the thing is all cool and uh, yeah, filled out. So right now, we had about 12 petals. You know, you see I'm going to need way more than that. So I'll, although not only am I going to go in between, I'm going to come in. Move back some. Hold it up. You're right. Not only am I going to, sorry. I'm going to come in with some so that my petal is going to be on the same level. One, keep on the same vibration that you were before going right across from each other. Now I need a little bit more water because it feels dry to make the snip across here. All right, so we still had some clay left from that piece I rolled. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a few more petals. So today we will be, uh, I will give you the email address that you are supposed to send your pictures to for the artist. It's actually, even if you hear me say it, art is walk, it's not going to be a walk because we're not walking to see the artwork. It's going to be a virtual art show. So if you can start to, although I know some people may or may not have any works right now, you may. What I wanted to say to everybody, especially like people like Vicki Bundridge, Deborah Bell, uh, Carrie Willis, I'm sure there are some more in the class. However, people that took my class making something out of nothing and those other art classes, please, you are more than welcome to take art uh, pictures of your art that you had made in my class previously, but that, but that has not already been in the art show. For example, like maybe your dioramas. You know, things like that. You can take pictures of pieces like that as well because we, I still will be presenting work from all of my classes along with pottery. Kimberly, remember when we were going to do the artist walk before and you all collected art? Can you hear me? Say that again. Remember when you all were going to um, have another art show and you all collected our art? You yes. know my diorama is still up at the center. So when you on during the clay schedule, if you need some of your other artwork, all you have to do is ask me to bring it out. I did. I'd be glad to bring it out. Oh, you all have access to the building? I think you all had access. Anyway. I said when we have our pottery schedule, all you have to do is ask me to bring your artwork out. Okay. Wait a minute. to get a pen and paper, please 
This is the email address that you need to send your photos to to be uh, approved. Did you take me off of uh, Spotlight? <laughs> Oh, now you want to no, be love looking at your beautiful room. I'm so sorry I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Deborah. <laughs> oh, glory. Good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. This is the email address for to send photography. It's artistshow2021 at gmail.com. So that's capital H, E, lowercase e, A, R, T, I, S, T, capital S, lowercase H, O, W, 2021 at gmail.com. Is it case sensitive? Do we have to make those uh, capitals? Yes. What now? I thought you said lowercase e a r t. I did. I said capital H and capital S. Yes. Okay. Wow. I didn't realize that uh, you had to do that. I mean, I guess when you create your account, if you put it in as a capital, it's going to be. Uh, I don't know when I when I log on to it. I'll try to do it in lowercase to see if, if it makes a difference. I don't think it does. Yes, it does with Gmail. Okay. With Gmail, it does. Yes. Wow. So I just made the last few petals that I'm going to make for today, and I'm adding that design to the petal, the daisy double line design. And I'm gonna add those petals at the center. And we will be done with that piece one across from it. Here. Need a little bit moisture. Here. Here. So I think it looks really kind of filled out. However, I'm going to still go ahead and use those last three petals that I have. I only have three. So why not? I decided to curve those last three petals upward a little bit differently. I got a call and check on Mr. Cumberland. Anybody heard from Mr. Cumberland? All right. So we're done with that. Now I'm taking the center. I'm going to add some scoring lines, scratch it. I'm just adding a little water. I'm going to sit that down in the center and gently press, but so as to not touch it with, uh, sorry, make finger impressions. I'm doing it very gently. That's why I'm pressing over and over so that I can add pressure softly, but at different times. That's the center. I'm going to go ahead and add a design by just taking the same tool. Let's see if I want to use another tool. Okay, I think I'm going to switch. Tools, you can use them just about as far as this tool, I don't know if I've ever seen it. I've seen it probably in wood, but not plastic. It just has like a really not pointy edge, but it has some type of surface area to it. I'm gonna just take it and start from the center and making dots going around. 
in a swirled pattern. I'll show how it looks, just how I started out. Wait. But now I'm going to finish the entire piece and then show that to you. And this is the end of my daisy. Let me take this up, sit it in the center. Let's change the paper all together. How about that? All right. That's yeah, pretty. All right. So when that is fired and dry, of course, you know, the only thing I have to paint is the center, which will be yellow. Leave the petals white and uh, put the pen on it. So last class, we had, uh, we created a, hold on, the, as far as I know, hair is beautiful. Oh, well, thank you so Your much. Your crown. Thank you. I think I might have enough hair to get something like that done now. Of course you do, because, you know, I was, like, really, really bald, like, short. And then my sister started uh, styling my hair, and she just would, like, really, really grip it. But each time, it grows a little bit. So I've seen the length of your hair. Your hair can definitely be braided. Yeah, it's finally got enough where I can kind of get a grip on enough of it to do something. Okay. Uh, if some of you do or don't know, we are having for all the Americans month, we're having a uh, sip and paint with myself, Kimberly, right? And the sip and paint is going to be uh, May the 12th, 2021. Sorry. 12, okay. <laughs> All right, so let me see. Right quick. All right, last week we we had a demo on how to create a suitable photography box and I'm going to show you the photos from that. Remember we took them really fast and it doesn't matter. I just wanted you to still see what we came up with. Can everybody see that? So this is the actual garden shoes. Can you see that? Yes. I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think it's a. It's not a bad photo, but as it pertains to showing off the shoes, it's not a really good photo. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Meaning yeah. I cannot see the whole shoe. You can't see the whole shoe, so be mindful of that. Somebody sent you that, Cam. I sent it to the email that we're sending our pictures to. This is the picture that I took last week in the class. Okay. All right, this picture, 
I think it's okay as it pertains to seeing one of the shoes or the shoe. I could have probably lift the one in the back up on something like a different level. However, I don't necessarily like the cloth. I think I the cloth. The way your background is set up is what you wanted us to make sure the black drop was like in that box, like or like the, um, <clears throat> what do you call it, uh, presentation box? I mean, depending on how you do it, I'm not saying that's just in stone how you have to take your pictures. You just want a clean look. But right here in this area, I think that that looks obscure and it could have been, the cloth could have been pulled over, but it doesn't really look good. I just want to show you from taking pictures that quick, the thing that probably would not look good. Meaning like you can still experiment and take do some other things. All right, moving right along, we have the pyramid. This picture is okay. The only thing I have to say is, if you see the line in the back, it looks like it's not level. And even I would still use this, if you gave me a picture like this, I would approve it because it's pretty much clean all, all over. The little, the little back, the levelness, it's just a little, little bit off, but it's not that bad. So I would accept something like that. All right, this is the next one. This is the same pyramid, uh, except for it's turned around on the other side. And I told you all to make sure that if your artwork has different levels or different facets or sides to it, you wanna take more than one picture of the piece because you're not able to walk around it at a table and see it in a live 3D. So you wanna be able to show different angles of the piece. I think this picture looks good. It's clean and your eye is just drawn to the artwork. Although we're not professionals as pertains to photography, maybe some of you out there are, but the lighting could be better, but still the lighting is good. I'll accept that. This is the third piece that where I added cloth. I wouldn't say that this is a bad photo, although first, my eye does go to the cloth as well as the artwork. It's like my eye is trying to blend both of them together. Maybe if I had this side right here covered up a little bit more, I don't know, but I still like the pictures more with the clean look. So again, if you decide to add some type of creativity or background, go for it. It might work, it may not work. All right, so that was the pyramid. We're going right on to the strawberry. The strawberry, uh, even though the angle of the picture, it's okay. I think the background kind of takes away from the picture in this set. It could just be the angle that I took, but it's okay. It's not the best, but this particular piece is much better. Oh, uh, yeah. How I zoomed okay. up on it. If, so if my shoes that I made have never been displayed anywhere but in class, yeah, I can, you can, you can okay. just like just like the dioramas or yeah. anything that we made that have never been been displayed, any type of drawings, you feel free to uh, you know or, or send pictures. Okay, moving right along to the pineapple. All right, this was a piece that I took the photo without the lid just to show the design of the inside of the lid. So since it's going to be a slideshow, you can show four or five photographs of a piece. However, I don't necessarily like the angle of how the paper is, but the next picture is perfect. Well, not perfect, but it's a good photo. So here it is. I think that looks good, especially if it gets cropped closer to the, to the grass in the background. But I, yeah, it's good. It's good. Thank you. And that particular, I just chose that really quick because it was like a scrap piece of paper that I had out and I thought it would go good with the pineapple and it actually really did. Y'all know last week if you were in class, I did not take no particular time to, uh, to do these pieces so they was quick. So I know if y'all take just a little bit of time, your pictures will come out amazing. Miss Kara Brown Willis. Yes. Is it okay if I show some of your artwork? 
Yes. I have to get consent, young people. All right. So the next piece is I took some photos of Miss Perry's artwork. We're going to start from, I would say, the first, the beginning of the piece. I would say this is the front of the vase. Now, I did not notice. The pictures looked perfect when I took them and when I sent them to her, but I did not notice. This picture was taken in a classroom. You can see the difference between what I'm trying to say is just the a wall and a counter. This is the sink counter in the classroom. Now, I don't know if you can see my mouse or cursor, but you can see this is on the, not trying to put my brother down. He's just real artistic and, and creative like that. But this is on Jamal's side. Y'all know he be having all kind of paint, paint splatters. I did not know it was so <laughs> many paint splatters on that countertop. But now you can see them. But now that I even thought since they are in a complete circle like this, it looks like it might have been meant to be like some kind of artwork. But in my opinion, I still would say that could be looking a little bit cleaner down there as pertains to the counter. That's why I say you can take a picture on the counter as long as you, you know, uh, crop it or, or zoom in. So that's a really, really good photo. But I'm going to show you different angles of the same piece. This is just turning it a little bit. You can see all this yellow and green and black on the counter. It does not look good to me. <laughs> this is the next piece turning around to the other side. When, what do you know? What did you notice? If I had to, uh, besides the color on the counter, what do you see that I would criticize about this piece? I see somebody in the, in the, it looks like a mirror and I see somebody sitting there. That could be looked at as artwork as it pertains to photography, seeing the image of somebody in the vase, but really that's me sitting down taking the picture. Oh, it does not look good. It's not that a vase good. turned out beautiful. Yes, it is. Yes, good work, Miss Care. That, I don't agree with that image of me being in her head as it pertains to you looking at the base as a subject, but it's okay if it was just photography, like you might have been trying to show off your photography tricks or something. I don't know. But this is the last side of that piece. All right. So you see again, once again, you see these colors on the countertop. They don't look good, but pretty much the photo is still okay if I were not to get another. I would accept that. So another one of pe a miscarried pieces she made a wine uh, oh, yeah. and so once again you see this color on the counter I did not see that at first maybe it was so small that looks really good at the photo and this is the last one so you see by zooming in it'll make something appear oh. large or you can see the detail from it so you all can do it just do your best taking pictures. You just want a clean background. Even this background has some type of marble striations in it, but it does not take away from the art piece. Your eyes still look at the art piece. All right. See, I'm going back to the um, um, flower, the daisy. I had to answer the You were doing the spiral on the button, and that was the end of it. Yes, ma'am. Only, the only thing I said from there is that when it dries, I only have to paint the center or the button, the center of the flower yellow because daisies are white with yellow centers and I have to apply the um, actual pen back for the pen. That's all. That daisy. Because they have different colors. Echinacea daisy. Because at first when you were making it look sort of like an echinacea with that raised bulb and those are orange, orangey, reddish color leaves. There's right. different varieties. So unless you just, or, or a yellow daisy. Those are pretty. They could be any color. Yes. I mean, especially when you're doing art. Because you're the artist it you might have a chocolate daisy for some reason. You might want to pour chocolate over daisy. And um, piece you cut out for the pen, the gold. Uh, uh, did you say anything about that? There's a little piece you 
laid the pen on top of and, and traced it. Your voice went down. I'm so sorry. Can you speak up, Miss Ethereum? Uh, the pen, the, you laid the pen on top of the clay and cut out of a, a, a circle. Okay. What happened with that? Say that again. What happened with that? <sighs> That's when I started layering the um. Oh. Okay. You want to know what size of your canvas to put a pen can fit? Okay. What? No, I got you. I understand. I thought okay. that I started layering the, the petals on top of that little circle. Okay. Yeah. The the inside the button, the circle was probably not that much bigger than that. Okay, I got you. So the circle that you cut out, you wanted to make sure the pin would fit on the back of that. Okay. Anyway, I just will show you. I took the pen, if this was the clay, laid it on the clay surface. I drew my circle right around the pen where it would not go out of that uh, di the diameter or the circumference because I don't want too much clay. It's just going to be a, a brooch that sits on your uh, chest. You don't want, I didn't want it to be too heavy meaning to use extra clay that I don't need. Right. So that's okay. how I made the circle. The outside of the circle does not come out any larger than this. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mary and Vicky, you guys have the same hairstyle today. And and uh, another person. <laughs> it's one know. other person. I I hair. <laughs> uh, no. Who had somebody else have it on to? Uh, yes. Let's see. Y'all so silly. <laughs> oh, Gloria, but hers isn't black. Yeah, yeah so, that's what it is. You and Vicky have on black ones today. So fortunately, being relaxed and everything, y'all can eat y'all's breakfast and wear y'all's bonnets in the home and all that uh, type don't of come. stuff, especially being that we're virtual. Not while we're recording. Now. But, but you're I recording, and that's why I'm not letting... See, look at that. That scared somebody. <laughs> Professional. Yes. Being professional. Because you're at work. This is spoiling me. I, I'm. Miss Deborah Bell. Yes, Miss Ethereal. Uh, you warned us when you took that class picture with us. When I went on YouTube and saw that picture, I, I should have been out of class that day. My God. Yes. Can you say that again. Something about your voice don't sound all the way clear to me. I'm so sorry. But that picture, that class picture you took, that's on YouTube. It's a class picture? Yes. It is terrible. Me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's on YouTube? Yeah, when, when I go to look at one of the classes. Oh, you try a picture of yourself. A, it's, a, it's a picture of all of us. Well, some of us. Do we and it's on YouTube? Uh-huh. Oh, I don't know if I posted that or somebody else posted like Miss Terrell or somebody. Oh, my goodness. You should have warned What they're doing is they're capturing the picture cam, and I think that's uh, wrong because when they capture, these people are putting things on Facebook. They are putting things everywhere by capturing. And what we're looking at is, um, I'm looking at um, the classroom pictures. I'm looking at 12 pictures right now of us on Zoom. What these people have done is like what I told you, Kim, that they were doing in. Um, Kermit's class. They capture the pictures and then they post it somewhere else. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, the phone uh, will allow you to uh, capture these pictures if you got and they'll just take a photo. Okay, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Uh, please stay online, but thank you so much for joining me today, Kimberly Wright with Hand Built Pottery and Sculpture. And don't forget <laughs> to do something to celebrate the day today, January 28th for National uh 
Day is your day. Thank you. Hold on. Thank, Thank you. you.